The previous slide discussed diurnal motion. That's the daily rising and setting of stars. But there's another kind of motion that uh, happens. And this is something the ancients realized, and that is that over time, you notice the sky shifted a little bit every day. And this is what we call annual motion. And that's because Earth is going around the sun. And so during part of the year, you look overhead and you see some stars. And during a different part of the year, at the same time of night, you look overhead, see different stars. And, and then different, different time of the year, you look overhead and see at the same time of night and see even different stars. So Earth goes around the sun. Now, this has an interesting effect in that uh, you see some of the stars that will be that tonight are going to be overhead. You know, you go out at 10 o'clock and some star, other stars overhead at midnight, but those stars will be overhead uh, uh, at 10 o'clock in a couple weeks or so, and so uh, uh, um, or, or or in a month or rather or so. So those those so the sky shifts a little bit just because Earth is moving. Has an interesting thing. Imagine that you've got a giant dimmer switch on the sun, and so uh, in Texas that'd be fantastic in these these hot summer days where it gets up to 100 degrees. Uh, but imagine that during part of the year the Earth is in one location around the sun, and if you had a dimmer switch on the sun, it would look like it's sitting in front of a constellation. There'd be stars up, and the stars up in the daytime you just can't see them because the sun's up. Now, a few months later, Earth is, has moved to a different spot. And then if you look at the sun, though, it looks like it's sitting in front of a different constellation. A few months later, Earth moves to an even different spot. And the sun, if you look at it, looks like it's in front of an even different constellation. And so this, this goes on over the course of the year. Eventually, Earth gets back to a starting point, and the sun looks like it's back in front of the same constellation it was to begin with. Now. In the ancient world, they didn't realize that Earth was the one that was moving. It just looked like the sun was shifting around the sky. And so they came up with a term for that, the apparent path of the sun through the sky over the course of a year is called the ecliptic. The constellations the sun appears to pass through over the course of the year is known as the zodiac. So the zodiacal constellations are the, the constellations that the sun passes through over the course of a year. And so uh, uh, that's, that turns out to be an interesting thing because it turns out that, that not only you know, does the, the, the Earth go around the sun, all the other planets go around the sun, and the orbits of those planets and the orbit of the moon around the Earth are all kind of close within a few degrees of the same plane. And so that means that not only do you find the sun in the zodiacal constellations, but this is where you would generally want to look if you wanted to see planets or the moon. Uh, so that, that means these, these, these handful of constellations, a couple handfuls of constellations, turn out to be very uh, commonly utilized by astronomers. If you were to take a map of the sky and plot the position of the sun on it, the ecliptic, and the ecliptic would make this big arching path here around the sky. Okay, so you've got this big arching path right here that goes all the way around the sky. That's the ecliptic, and, and you notice that it actually uh, gets only so far north and only so far south. The farthest north the sun ever gets is 23 and a half degrees north, and the farthest south it ever gets is 23 and a half degrees south, or minus 23 and a half degrees. Okay, now that's an interesting thing, because what's the, what is directly overhead for us in the Fort Worth area? Well, it's close to 33 degrees, between 32 and 33 degrees. But the farthest the sun ever gets is 23 and a half degrees. So that means the sun is never directly overhead for us. Uh, 
Now, that's that's really kind of something that, that I noticed as a kid because I was going to do a science fair project in elementary school and I was going to have a stick. And I knew because the teacher told me that at noon the sun's going to be straight overhead. And so I thought, well, that means the sunlight would come straight down and there would be no shadow on the stick. And so I did my little experiment to show that there's no shadow on the stick at noon. And guess what? There was a shadow at noon. And, and what even was more confusing to me was the shadow was actually shortest, not at noon, but, you know, like an hour or so later. And so I was just really confused by that. And so I thought maybe I just didn't have the stick right. And so I borrowed my dad's level and made sure it was really vertical. And the experiment repeated just like it did before. N uh, there's still a shadow at noon. And so I was just like, oh, okay. Where would you have to be for the shadow to be non-existent at noon? You'd have to be directly under where the sun is directly un overhead. And so now that means you have to be between 23 and a half degrees north and 23 and a half degrees south. So the farthest north you can be is 23 and a half degrees north latitude. We call that the Tropic of Cancer. And the farthest south you can ever be is 23 and a half degrees south, the Tropic of Capricorn. If you're between the tropics, the sun will be overhead. Well, how often? Okay. Well, if you had to be in Mexico City, you know, which, which is uh, about here, notice the sun is actually only overhead two days out of the year. So, yeah, it's in the tropics, but only two days out of the year. For part of the year, it's no, it passes north of overhead, and for most of the year, it passes south of overhead. Only two days is it overhead. Well, how often is the sun overhead at the equator? Okay. Well, again, my teacher told me the sun's always overhead at the equator, but if you look at this, the sun's on the celestial equator, again, only two days out of the year. So only two days out of the year is the sun directly overhead of the equator. Half the year it's north of overhead, and half the year it's south of overhead. Another way of thinking about this is on the celestial sphere, you can plot the path of the sun here, and it makes this path that goes north and south, so it makes this big uh, uh, tilted path around. Okay, well, when it's north, notice it shines more on the northern part of the Earth. When it's to the south, it shines more on the southern part uh, of the earth. Now, that's actually what gives rise to the seasons, okay? And, and that's because of how this works. But, but, but uh, before we get to that point, let me explain a couple of terms that are in this diagram. We have the farthest north the sun ever gets. We call that the summer solstice. The winter solstice is the farthest south the sun ever set, gets. The equinoxes are when the sun's on the celestial equator. The autumnal equinox happens in September when the sun's directly uh, uh, over the Earth's equator uh, and it's on the celestial equator. Uh, the uh, vernal equinox that's in the spring, that occurs in March. And so th this gives rise to what's going on here. But wait, wait a minute, is the sun really moving? No, it's really Earth that's moving. And so it's really Earth going around the sun, and Earth is tilted on its axis as it goes around the sun. It's tilted 23 and a half degrees. So when Earth is in this part configuration, then the sun shines mainly on the southern part of the Earth. And so the days are long in the south, and they're short in the northern hemisphere. Uh, it's summertime in the southern hemisphere, and it's wintertime in the northern hemisphere. On the other hand, when the sun, when the Earth is over here, then what happens is the sun shines more in the northern hemisphere. In fact, at the North Pole, because you're tilted towards the sun, the, the sun never sets. So you get like six months of light. On the other side over here, you're tilted away from the sun, and so you have six months of darkness. And so uh, uh, that, that happens at both poles. So in this case, though, you have the northern hemisphere having summertime, the southern hemisphere has wintertime. Okay, so the, 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 the seasons are backwards because of this. 
and and uh, uh, that that turns out to be kind of an interesting thing. You know, for example, uh, uh, winter time in the northern hemisphere over here. We have winter time uh, uh, in the northern hemisphere, but it's summertime in the southern hemisphere. So that means that uh, Dece in December, uh, December 21st or, or thereabouts uh, is when uh, the the winter solstice is. And so that's the farthest south the sun ever gets. And so that's why it's actually cold in the northern hemisphere uh, is that you don't get as much sunlight. Uh, but you get more sunlight in the southern hemisphere. So that means that just a few days later when Santa Claus de de delivers presents, he wears uh, uh, shorts and a tank top to deliver presents in Australia. I I I've seen pictures of that. Okay, so anyway, but, but that's, that's due to the tilt of the Earth. Okay, this tilt of the Earth means that the sun sometimes is on the celestial equator and sometimes it's north of the celestial equator, sometimes south of the celestial equator. Well, the celestial equator crosses your horizon due east and it crosses your horizon due west. So, in the summertime, when the sun is north of the celestial equator, it actually rises in the northeast and sets in the northwest. In the wintertime, it rises in the southeast and it south sets in the southwest. By the way, remember, we got the zenith here. 33 degrees south, another 23 and a half degrees to get down to uh, this, the uh, winter solstice. That means the sun is actually uh, very low in the southern sky at noon. So 23 plus 33, uh, that's going to be 56. So about 56 and a half degrees from directly overhead. And so that's, that means just a little, you know, a little over 33 degrees above the southern horizon. Again, that's, that means the sun shines on the southern face of buildings more directly. Whereas in the summertime, you actually get a sun, little sunlight at sunrise and sunset on the northern face of a building. And so, again, th this, this, this has to do with this motion here. Uh, and so uh, you can sometimes notice that the sun shines in windows differently at different times of the year. And, and th this, again, this is because of, of the tilt of the Earth and the motion of the Earth around the sun, this annual motion. Here's actually a, a, a picture I found on the Internet, and um, it shows the sun from one particular location on Earth rising on different months. At, at this, and so you can see that it sometimes rises to the north and it sometimes rises to the south. So, so again, this is at sunrise. And the sunrise is at different times. Now, this is actually something that's useful. In the ancient world, they actually aligned buildings with this so that on critical holy days of the year, the sun would shine through a building and illuminate uh, certain things uh, like an idol or something or, or a symbol or whatever on a particular day of the year. And so, again, the ancients realized this, this annual motion here.